Hey guys and welcome back to the Lit Shop. So this is me from the past because I need to make the block ready to take it to the machine shop so they can measure it really precisely and make it ready by resurfacing it and maybe even drill it to the first oversize but I hope we can stay standard size and I'm doing that now because I need to know which pistons I need to order and other parts I may need to make the block really clean. Damn it. Long bolts. Oh, maybe. Let's take it out. Here we go. Last piece of the one crazy. gonna put the crankshaft in an old towel because I'm gonna be delivering that to another machine shop that can take care of the crankshaft. Dude! This sucker is heavy man! <laughs> a crankshaft of a Jay-Z is really heavy. It's insane! Now I know why they are so strong! So that's the crank out of the block and the block still looks amazing everywhere I look. No cracks to be seen. We're gonna bring it back to life and we're gonna bring it back even better. Today is gonna be an exciting day because I'm finally gonna start building my 1JZ for the S13 and I'm doing that at work because we got all the tools, all the things that I need, we got it here and it's a clean room and not my shop because that's nowhere near being clean. So that's why we're doing it in here and I can focus way better on building the engine right. So I'm gonna start with measuring the cylinders and then I'm gonna measure the pistons, measure the clearance that it has and then we're gonna start gapping the piston rings so that the clearance on the piston rings is right and we don't have too much blow by or anything like that and that the compression is good so that's step two and I think that's all we're getting done today. So I'm gonna get started and I'll give you guys updates in between but yeah it's gonna take a long time. Seven hours later Alright, the piston rings are done and I also measured the block. I can't measure the pistons yet. Well, I can measure them but I also want to weigh them so that I can balance the weight better for high RPM. But the rings are done and I only made this one. I still need to write that one down, don't look over there. But I made this one a little bit too big. But I think it will be okay so I'm just gonna run it because it's still in spec. Kinda. But it's gonna be okay, I'm gonna run it. Alright, next up is the head. I'm gonna reassemble it and the machine shop already started it but they broke a few of the stem seals. So I just grabbed the new one out of the shelf because we have them in stock. So change the seals and then put on the springs, retainers, everything new. So we got a new build head. So what you doing? 
<laughs> Just having fun. Yeah, I bet. Good morning guys, it's the next day. Yesterday I finished with the piston rings and with assembling the head. I got my morning coffee, I'm on my way to work and we'll continue to build when I get there. So today's plan, what I'm gonna start with is weighing the pistons and the rods with that little thingy over there while how I met your mother is on in the background because I always need some, something on in the background but we're gonna start with weighing them and then we can match them with one another so the weight is almost exactly the same hmm. stop that hmm. Right, so I think it's 3.30, because when there's a 1, it's saying 3.29. That doesn't make any sense. Alright, so I weighed them all, and they are all 6.06 or 6.07, so that's really close. And the pistons were 3.28 or 3.29 we got two that are a gram heavier and the other ones are exactly the same and we got two that are lighter I guess that was a seven 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 please be a seven seven and then we got a six and a six so we got two sixes for the 29s and the rest have sevens for the 28 so it's exactly in balance and that's really nice and i'm really happy because that makes my job way easier of balancing the engine and making sure that the weight is distributed right so yeah it's a good start now let's put them together put the rings in and i think even put the engine together today that would be cool because i already did the head yesterday i didn't film a lot because i wanted to focus but yeah the head looks amazing it's all clean and new we got new valves in there i'm gonna take the foil off in a minute but we got all new valves we got beehive springs we got new retainers we got billet keepers so we just need the lifters from another engine over there we'll see which one it's gonna be but if we got the lifters then the head can go on when the block is assembled and then <laughs> then it's going fast so yeah i'm excited Right, first one is assembled and it was a little bit of a hassle to get the clips in but I managed to get them in and I may have used a little bit too much of assembly loop but I don't think there is a thing as too much assembly loop so I'm just using a lot to be sure that it's all nice and coated in some lubricant. They are all put together and I measured the rod bearings and it's looking good. Crank is still the OEM size so the clearance is exactly right and that's good to know. So now we can order the thrust bearings and then next weekend I can put it together. Alright we're back. It's a week later and I'm gonna continue on building the engine and I hope to be done today because we have 26 days to finish the car and that's including the engine so I hope to finish it today so we can put it in the car and then we can go to the tuner, go tune it hope it doesn't die, I hope it works, hope I did my job right <laughs> but yeah that's what I'm gonna do and I'm taking you guys along as always so let's get started on building this engine Alright so I got the bearings in the block and I put the oil squirters back so the underside of the pistons get enough oil for cooling and even more lubrication. And over here I got the bearings in the main caps. So now I can put the ARP studs back because I took them out for cleaning. And then I think we can install the crankshaft. It's plastic gauge time. And I used the measuring tool on the bearings for the rods and I measured the cranks. So those are good, don't have to measure that one. But I don't think that measuring the main caps is going to be easy because while well, measuring this one or measuring the last one it's going to be a hassle so I'm not going to do that and you also got these crevices for oil and I think that the measuring tool can get stuck in there and then maybe it fucks up the alignment or anything I don't know <laughs> I'm going to use plastic gauge because that's what everybody does and it is you can't trust it 
if you do it right. So I'm just gonna cut off some pieces and then we're gonna lay the crank in there without any oil. Then we're gonna torque it to spec and see what the plastic gauge says. And if it's in spec, gonna install the crank and see if we can turn it freely with some uh, assembly loop, of course. And then when that's good, we can install the pistons and then we're going, then it's going fast. And then we can finish the engine today, I hope. So yeah, let's place the gauge. All right, time to put the crank in. Please don't drop it. Please don't scra scratch it. Please just don't be my typical self. So now we're gonna put a strip of plastic gauge there, 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 and the last one over there. Then we're gonna torque the main caps to spec so it's in its normal position. Not turn the crankshaft because there's not oil in there or anything and I don't want to scratch it. But you need to use the plastic gauge without any oil because otherwise your clearance is not reading right because you already got oil in there. So it needs to be a dry fit and then torque to spec, take it off, measure and hope it's good. So I torqued the main caps and took them back off and as you can see the plastic gauge did its job. We got some nice little stripes on there and now we can measure with the packaging what the clearance is. So if we just focus on there and then we can use this little thing. And as you can see, it's just a little bit wider than the green and a little bit smaller than the white. So that tells me that the clearance is around 0 0.045, I guess. And 0 0.045 is exactly what we want. So. so now I'm gonna check the rest, but it's looking good and I'm happy with that. So I'll see you guys in a second. I cleaned off all the plastic gauge stuff from the crank, from the main caps. I feel confident, so let's use the ultra slick assembly loop and then we're just gonna lube it up. Just put it that, come on focus. Just put it out of loop in there. It's time to put it in. Man, I'm excited for this. So excited. All right, so torque spec for the main studs is 60 foot-pounds of torque, and I'm gonna be doing 20, 40, 60. So you got it nice and even. And also make sure that they are both seated before you torque them. And you can also see if the lube is doing its job, if the nut is moving quite easily all the way to torque, then you know that the lube is doing their job and it's not getting any friction on the washer or the main cap. So always make sure that it turns freely and then you know your torque specs are on point. So let's just torque these down with two more steps to 60 foot pounds. So try to do it in one fluid motion. And make sure to not stop. So the crank is in, spins freely, so that's good. Now I can put in the pistons. And I got all the pistons over here, weighed them out, so they're all exactly the same weight, within a few milligrams maybe. I also did the rings that are still over there. So now I can put on the rings on the pistons and put the pistons 
in the block. All right, first piston going in. sure that the cap is seated on both sides before you're gonna torque it so actually just hang tight and the first one is on yeah I'm getting really excited it's kind of hot in here as you can see but I'm I'm really excited my, my engine is coming back together again and we're gonna drive it soon so i'm gonna do the rest and pick you guys up when i'm done with that five hours later all the pistons are in and i cleaned the surface and i put the head gasket back on so now could you be quiet please So now I just need to put the ARP head studs back on and then we can put on the head. I forgot the washers from my ARP head studs so I'm just gonna make a quick commute home and back to get the washers. And we're back with the washers. Finally, it's time to put the head on. So I cleaned all surfaces. The washers of the ARP head studs are already in the head because otherwise you cannot get them in anymore. Now it's just aiming it right, which is always harder than it should be. And then it slides right on. Yeah, right, <clears throat> time to torque this baby. <clears throat> I already did two sequences, first one was 30 foot-pounds, the second one was 65, and I'm going to 100 foot-pounds, that is what ARP recommends. So we're just gonna follow the sequence of tightening it from the middle to the outside. I got it here on my phone, so yeah, let's torque this bitch. So the long block is back together, but I'm gonna continue tomorrow and then we're gonna order the buckets that we need and then I can put it back together next weekend and then the engine should be done. So for you guys, again, it's gonna be a second and for me, it's gonna be a week. So I'll see you guys in a second. Bye JJ, see you next week. All right, so I'm back at work. It's a new day and I'm gonna start assembling the engine even further. And the head is back on, the camshafts are in, and we need to take the head back off after I put it on last Sunday because my valve clearance wasn't right. So I need to bring it back to the machine shop and luckily they came through and they did it in one day. They cut the valves, while well, they cut the head so that the valves sit in the head further and the valve clearance is correct. Then we could measure it and I ordered 24 new solid lifters from Toyota. So I got solid lifters, no shims that can pop out and my valve clearance is perfect on every one of them. So now it's just time to assemble the engine, put the timing belt on, all that. <clears throat> and the reason why this is looking a little different is because I forgot my camera at home. So I'm just filming with my phone right now, but I want to capture the little process I'm gonna make today because I'm gonna take the engine home today, but not before I put on the oil pump, put on the timing belt, put on the uh, oil pans. So when that's done, we're gonna take it home. 
and then I got my camera again we can do some b-roll of the engine or something like that but for now I'm gonna be putting it back together and I'll see you guys in a little bit convenient thing about working here is I need new camshaft seals so I just go here grab two new ones and then install them on the engine and the engine is mostly back together I still need to paint the valve covers but the AN bungs for the for the catch can are welded in so just paint them put them on intake I got a new one so that's bolt on oil filter I got at home so that's the little heat exchanger that's going back on I got the pan on and the lower pan I even welded a bung in there for the oil temp. So I got oil pressure from here and oil temp from there. And now we can put on the exhaust manifold and then make the oil feed from here to the top of the turbo and then a hard line return into that one. So I customized my CBS racing manifold a little bit because this was a T4 twin scroll and I got a T3 on my turbo. So I'd rather have a T3 manifold, but we don't have them in stock and it's gonna take weeks to make. And this one was a cheap old version. So yeah, I welded a T3 flange on there. Welds look really nice, welded the inside as well. So twin scroll stays twin scroll. And then I just need to replace this one because this is a 50 millimeter flange for wastegate and I got a 46. So I need to cut it off, weld another one on there, and then we can place the turbo on the manifold, the manifold on the engine, make the return and feed line for the turbo, and then we're done and we can take the engine home. And just like that, I got my oil return for the turbo and it's gonna hook up on the little tube over there on the block to drain it all back into the pan. <laughs> 